thanks everyone. Okay, so I'm going to be talking to you about the um, ideological battleground narratives and counter narratives. And I've been uh, researching this for about hmm, about five years now, but I just like to contextualise my interest my interest in it. And uh, part of the interest, of course, comes from research and being an academic. But the other part of the interest is also personal because I'm Australian, but I'm also Egyptian Arabic Muslim background. So um, looking at some of the terroristic narratives online, the question came to me is why would anyone be attracted to this? And who's attracted to it? Why has the AQ narrative online been so successful in attracting certain people um, and, and engaging them in an ongoing terroristic narrative? Um, and part of that is uh, this part here. Um, Joseph Nye talks about soft power and he talks about attraction and credibility. Uh, and uh, how attraction really depends on credibility. So my questions then started to evolve around, well, how come um, Al Qaeda, the Al Qaeda narrative has credibility and who does it have credibility for? And then how do we then counter that by establishing credibility um, in, in, in a different space and in a different sense? And part of the reason why the AQ narrative has got credibility has to do with the nature of Islam itself. And I'm not talking about any kind of misguided understanding that Islam is inherently violent. I'm talking about the way in which Islamic jurisprudence um, and, um, uh, and uh, religious issues in Islam are debated within the religion. Uh, the other reason is also uh, the, uh, the, the nature of the internet, uh, which has become the major dissemination tool for um, the terroristic narrative. And the other reason, uh, or the other part of it, is our response, how we've responded. Uh, and uh, I come back to Martin's uh, quote by um, Ayman al-Zawahiri and uh, some of the quotes by Zawahiri that um, uh, Angela used as well. And it becomes very clear that the strategy of Al-Qaeda isn't just a hard power strategy. There is a very uh, sophisticated soft element, soft power element to it. And that sophisticated soft power element is primarily through the narratives that are disseminated online. Why not working? Oh, why not working? Ah, there we go. Okay. Uh, so when we look at the problem and defining the problem, the, the act itself, the terrorist act itself, really um, uh, going back to David's presentation about why the Westgate guys didn't put up um, images of the violence. Well, when you look at violence, what does violence communicate? It doesn't communicate love, it doesn't communicate compassion, it communicates anger and hatred. So violence itself is very limited as a communication tool. So the uh, terrorists then have to rely on other communication protocols to make their point clear. And within those communication protocols you have the propaganda that's generated on the internet. Okay, oh, I don't want to go through that. Okay, I don't want to go through too much of the um, of the terrorist content on internet stuff because I know that there are other speakers who will do that um, much more eloquently and uh, th than I can. So I'm, I'm going to skip through a lot of this first part and get to the guts of what I'm presenting. Uh, the terroristic narratives online, their elements, um, if you read any of the stuff online, it's very, very consistent elements of a narrative. There's an ongoing war against Islam, particularly perpetrated by the West. Uh, Muslim rulers are corrupt because they negotiate and they um, deal with the West. Uh, there's Muslim injustice. Uh, Muslims therefore have an obligation to wage a violent jihad uh, in response to this injustice. Uh, there's a narrative of self-sacrifice self and the restoration of, the, of Islamic rule as a solution to the corruption, a solution to the ongoing war, a solution to the injustice and part of the obligation. Okay, why does it work? Okay, it works for two reasons. It works because they know their audience. And the other reason is because there hasn't been an appropriate response. And I'll go through those two. Okay, focusing on the audience. Okay, not a lot of work has been done on the audience. Not a lot of work has been done on who's reading this stuff, who's engaging with it. 
Okay. Out of all the, 90, like the, the, the millions of Muslims in the world, who are this small percentage who are reading this, engaging with it, um, uh, uh, and, and moving forward with it? Okay. And at what point do they engage? What point do they disengage? Not a lot has been done on the audience. Not a lot has been done on segmenting the audience. Um, uh, I've done a little bit of work, and part of, part of what motivates the audience uh, the six identified factors. The first one is transnationalism and the emergence of the Muslim diaspora, which Martin spoke about. The second one is a shared victim identity among Muslims around the world. No matter where you are, there is a sense of victim identity that is uh, quite hard to move away from. Uh, Waning soft power in the Middle East and, Muslim con and, and in Muslim countries. So particularly with the war on terror, the, even the terminology of war uh, 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 framed counter-terrorism as specifically a hard response, a military response. Okay? Uh, at the same time, you have growing anti-Americanism and growing anti-Western sentiments within the Middle East, reducing the ability to co-opt, to influence um, and to attract uh, positive responses through the Middle East and the Arab world and um, through Muslim countries. Uh, large, uh, large and widespread disenchantment, suspicion of Western media and therefore disengagement with Western media sources. And the, therefore, um, you have Muslims in the diaspora as well as in Arab countries looking for alternative media sites uh, to get their news and their information. Access to new media platforms, which has been, um, I, think, I think Egypt has the largest number of Facebook users in the world. Uh, and a perceived presence of a personal and communal, communal crisis. And I always say, you know, in times of crisis, people turn to God. Okay, suddenly everyone becomes religious um, and this is uh, uh, couched in the survival of Islam and the need to ensure the survival of Islam. Okay, when we focus on the response, as I said, the war on terror narrative really frames CT primarily as a hard response. We've been really lax in, in a soft response. We've been way behind the terrorists in uh, utilising an appropriate and an equal uh, soft response to, to, uh, to terrorism. Uh, we've had a lack of focus on soft power, little understanding of the online process of radicalization. This is where we need more research. More research needed in understanding the audience and why and how and who. Uh, uh, we haven't made a compelling case for nonviolent action. Okay. Uh, as as, as uh, speaking here about the West and as a counter-terrorism response, we really haven't made a compelling case for non-violent action. And I'll give you the example of foreign fighters going to Syria. In Australia, we've introduced a new law. You can't go overseas to fight. Um, uh, you'll be arrested. Okay? But at the same time, Australia doesn't support the um, Assad regime. So there's no, not really, you know, there's uh, frame alignment uh, coming into it again. And this big one, there's a lack of credibility of the message. The messages that come out, particularly when they're driven by government, have a, have a lack of credibility. And that's really where I want to focus the rest of this talk through a practical example of an online counter narrative. Um, I'm not going to go through that. Okay. I want to talk to you about uh, this particular um, online counter narrative. This uh, is called, if, if, if you can't read Arabic, who can read Arabic? Oh, good, not me either. It says, Al Irhab, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Terrorism, I am Muslim, I am against it. And it's the catchphrase of a comprehensive counter narrative campaign in the Middle East called Say No to Terror. Okay? Say No to Terror has a presence in the Middle East. It includes a website, it includes a number of videos, um, social media, Facebook and Twitter. Um, and it also uh, is uh, re uh, aired, its videos are aired as a public service announcement on the Pan-Arab Middle East Broadcasting Centre, MBC, and Al Arabiya channels, which are owned by Saudi Arabia. So a very, very comprehensive campaign. Um, it's aimed specifically at a Muslim Arabic 
audience, underscored by its uh, campaign slogan, Terrorism, I am Muslim, I am against it. According to the website, terrorism is a criminal act targeting innocent people and it deserves to be fought by all means and to have its claims and its devastating effects on our society disclosed. In the About Us section of the website, uh, they, uh, the Say No to Terror states its mission as to expose the claims of terrorist agitators and unveil their crimes, to encourage those who have a conscience to reject the criminal acts and destructive ideas and to fight them in order to protect our society from their wrongs and their destructive impact on all levels. Now, I've undertaken a comprehensive um, analysis of this website, had it completely translated from Arabic into English. So there's none of the content is available in English. It's all in Arabic. And um, I did, uh, the content is continually changing. So I did an analysis of the 15 videos that were available for viewing between February and August of last year and some of the posts. And that's what I'm going to uh, present to you, just a snapshot of some of that, that today and then talk about why it fails or why it succeeds and where it's going wrong and what we can learn from it. Okay, that's the Facebook page. If you're interested, the website, uh, that's the Facebook uh, domain, but the website is um, sntt.me. Okay. These are some of the, the films uh, or the videos that you can, you, can, um, you can watch. Now, an analysis of the videos um, highlighted uh, several themes that apply, uh, that appeal, sorry, either to logic and reason or habit and emotion. So two kinds of uh, forms of appeal there. And the four themes that are highlighted in the videos are, first of all, the detrimental consequences of joining a terrorist group for the individual and the family. And that's really important because family is really big in Arab culture. Um, the second one is terrorists Terrorist groups use manipulation and lies. So there is a discrediting of, of terrorists as liars and um, manipulators. Um, the third one is really interesting. They frame terrorists as the enemies of Islam. Okay. So they revoke the idea that the West is the enemy of Islam and they reframe the enemy of Islam as terrorists. And the fourth one is that Muslims have a duty to be vigilant about terrorism and to protect themselves and their communities uh, from extremism. So uh, just a couple of, uh, I'll just go through one of the videos, for example. I'm trying to think of which one I like the most. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's one called The Enemy Within, okay? And this one depicts scenes of a terrorist attack in an undisclosed Muslim country. All of them are undisclosed Muslim countries. You don't know which country they're filmed in. But the films are really highly stylized. Um, and I run, an, I run an NGO called People Against Violent Extremism. We've recently received um, uh, funding from the Australian government to develop Australia's first online counter-narrative campaign. And Part of that was to um, to make three videos. So I know how much a video costs to make, and these ones we couldn't even dream of having the kind of money to produce these kinds of films. They are extremely highly stylized. So, uh, so in this, in in the enemy within, which um, I think is that one there. Okay. Um, uh, so each victim of the attack is named. So it shows a, an aftermath of, a, of an attack. It pans in on each of the victims and they're all named, they're all given names to give them humanity. Okay. Um, then the, the, the accompanying text reads, thousands of inno innocent people die as victims of misguided terrorists pretending to act in the name of Islam. And this text is in Arabic, of course. The video then concludes with a popular hadith that is attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, uh, which says, the Muslim is the one from whose tongue and whose hands other Muslims are secure. Okay. So what's really interesting about the videos is that they, um, they, they, they target aspects of Muslim culture and Muslim tradition that are very familiar to Muslims. The role of the family, the role of parents, um, and this is the, 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 the meta-narrative that they use. It's deeply embedded in Islamic culture. So it appeals to their Muslim Arabic audience. 
The other thing it does is it also uses quotations from Quran and from Hadith to lend it some credibility as well and to uh, uh, counter those quotations from Quran and Hadith that terroristic narratives use to lend their narrative credibility. How am I going for time? Five minutes. Okay, I better hurry up. Okay, this is one of the posters. Um, I can just quickly translate it for you. One of the posters, this one says, you may not, you may not look like him, you may dress differently, um, but if you support what they do, then you are as bad as him. So it's basically targeting support for terrorism. Uh, here's another one of their posters and you can read the, um, uh, the translation there. Extremism is the first step towards terrorism. Uh, so it's a, a hooded terrorist looks <laughs> with a big bee gut um, <laughs> riding on a donkey um, and the donkey's eyes are, are folded, uh, are blindfolded and um, that reads supporters of terrorism. So supporters of terrorism are basically riding on donkeys, blindfolded donkeys. Very Arabic in its nature as well, these kinds of cartoon cartoon-like depictions. This one uh, shows a high-ranking sheikh uh, saying to a young recruit, I'm going to send you to, uh, to jihad and you will go to, to heaven as a martyr. And then turning to his son, I'm going to send you to America to study and get a high-ranking job. So again, uh, undermining the credibility of, 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 uh, of violent preachers. Um, and this one focuses on youth in the hands of the, uh, of, of the terrorists. Um, and uh, you, can, you can read that for yourself there. I don't want to harp on too much about them because you can go on their website and look at them yourself um, or come to me if you want the full analysis. I'm quite happy to send the full analysis out to everyone. Okay, so looking at say no to terror as, uh, as an effective form of, of noise, as an effective form of disruption online for online uh, terroristic narratives. Uh, Wyman and Van Knopp point out one, two, three, four, five elements of a successful uh, disruption strategy online. The first one is credibility. And I go back to my original quotation from Joseph Nye about credibility being very central to influence. Um, the fact is we don't know much about, about Say No to Terror. The website itself is hosted in Montenegro, uh, which may be an uh, attempt to uh, uh, circumvent the attitudes um, of, mis and of mistrust of, of American-sponsored communication in the Arabic world. Um, one study that's actually looked at Say No to Terror actually found that for all the videos that are posted on, 60% of the comments are overwhelmingly negative. Not only are they overwhelmingly negative, but Say No to Terror has actually spawned a counter campaign with videos that are tagged with um, 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 taglines such as Jihad, I'm Muslim, I'm for it. And Occupation, I'm Muslim, I'm against it. One of the biggest reasons for that is that it really lacks credibility. Now, credibility is a really difficult thing to establish online. And I think there needs to be more research in this, particularly given the fragmentation and decentra decentralization of religious authority in Islam and the, the fact that um, uh, the internet has now become a virtual marketplace of religious ideas. You know, we talk about Sheikh Google. You know, you want to know a question, you want to know the answer to a question of whether something is halal or haram, ask Sheikh Google. You'll get a hundred answers. Some of them will be conflicting, but then it's your own personal agency to make up your mind about whether you want the extremist interpretation or whether you want the progressive secular interpretation. Probably can guess I go for the secular ones. Uh, terminology plays an important part as well. Now, what's really important with Say No to Terror is they do pick up on some of those uh, uh, religious doctrines that, um, that terroristic narratives use, takfir, jihad uh, in particular. Um, uh, oh, what does that mean? One minute. One minute, okay, okay. Ooh. Okay, and come on, talk, 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 talk. Um, okay, so they do pick up on those terminologies, but it's not <laughs> the, the, the primary role of the website to challenge those, those doctrines or those, the interpretation of those doctrines. Um, much of the website and most of the stuff on the website actually uh, goes back to 
the principles of Islamic and Muslim culture, not so much the religious part of it, which is very interesting. Um, uh, traditions, uh, as I mentioned, it uses those Islamic cultural, religious traditions, symbols and values in order to lend some credibility to it. Partners, um, at the moment, Say No to Terror remains um, just really a, a campaign that's, that's online. There doesn't seem to be any other partners um, affiliated with it. Um, and uh, the same with Co-op Act, Local Thinking Global, which talks about co-opting um, additional agents of change. So it's not, as far as I know, it's not used in schools. Um, it's not, uh, there's not an education program based around it. It's just a singular uh, campaign that stands on its own online. And the videos are broadcast um, through those uh, Saudi Arabian channels, as I mentioned. Uh, does it work? I've already talked about that. Um, the biggest thing being there is no credibility of the source. Um, um, evidence, some uh, uh, evidence suggests that there's a widespread belief uh, throughout the Middle East that the campaign is actually CIA. Um, <laughs> but uh, we don't have uh, anything to say. Okay, so the conclusions. First conclusion is that it's not just enough to challenge the master narrative. It's not just enough to challenge interpretations of jihad or takfir um, when we challenge terroristic narratives online. Okay? I give talks throughout Australia and I often get protested by some of the active Salafi jihadi groups in Australia. And they'll stand up and, and say, and I'll say to them, you know what, you can bring me 100 sheikhs who are going to give me your view and I can bring you 100 sheikhs who are going to give you my view. Okay? So um, you can't just challenge the master narrative. You also have to provide an alternative. Okay. It's no good to say to somebody you're wrong, you shouldn't do this, what else can you do? You need to know the audience is the second thing and that's where we really need to as researchers and, um, and, and working in this field need more information about the audience. Understanding the context, say no to terror works, works to a point um, within the Muslim world or within the Middle East but the elements that it uses wouldn't work for diaspora Muslims which probably explains why it is only available in Arabic. Uh, credible sources, uh, big one, offer alternatives I've already spoken, ab spoken about. We need to be smarter about our online campaigns. Um, and by smarter, I mean more strategic. And that's not just about online campaigns, but about all the soft, soft um, options that we're, we're um, that we're doing. Um, you know, Australia, we've spent millions and millions of dollars uh, on, on training Muslim youth to be leaders. Um, you know, if you, if you look at that, every Muslim, young Muslim person in Australia is now a leader um, uh, as part of our counter-terrorism strategy. Um, not smart, not smart, not strategic and utilising partnerships and credible voices. And this is where we can uh, harness the voices of formers, for example, but also victims um, as well. And I think that's my time, isn't it? I think that's more than my time. Thank you very much for listening and um, happy to take questions later.